guys, welcome back to the Friday Q&A. Today I'm going to be answering all of your questions about discoid or numular eczema. And this time of year I think is really appropriate as the heaters are coming on, this skin condition tends to come out and flare and really be problematic and set you up for quite a, quite a miserable winter. Numular dermatitis or numular eczema, if you're not familiar, is a skin condition that is chronic, there's not a cure for it, it gets better and then flares later on down the road. It consists of round patches of red, raw, inflamed, incredibly itchy eczematous or eczema, eczema affected skin. <clears throat> and it tends to occur most often on the extremities, like the legs and the arms, but it can occur anywhere on the body. And oftentimes there is intervening skin in between the round patches that is unaffected, normal, maybe, however, dry and a little bit hyper irritable. Numular eczema, um, when it uh, manifests, it can appear in kind of one or one out of two different ways. Acutely, or when it first pops up, it is a wet, wet, weepy kind of rash. It's oozy. The word eczema literally means boiling over. And what happens in the very beginning stages of the eruption of this rash is that in people with eczema and eczema prone skin, there is an inherent barrier defect in the skin. The skin is just not as as strong a skin barrier as, as it could be. And as a result, it has a tendency to lose water and lose water sort of all at once, either from some type of trigger, which I'll name in a, in a moment. The water within the skin literally boils up to the surface and that round patch is uh, raw, weepy, it kind of oozes this uh, what's called serosanguinous clear fluid. And those patches are not only often very itchy, but anything that you put on them can really sting and burn. Very, very uncomfortable. Then with time, the second presentation of this kind of develops, and that is more of a dry patch, uh, a dry patch with kind of a crust on it that remains very itchy, but some of the skin has started to heal over it and has become thick. It remains very itchy and the individual has a strong, strong, strong desire to scratch the spot. And in doing so, the response to that scratching is that the skin actually thickens, can become dark and a uh, very dark brown. In today's video, I'm going to give you some tips on skincare for this condition and, and some suggestions of things that will hopefully be helpful to you. But it's important for you to understand that this is a chronic skin condition for which there's not a cure. It can spontaneously resolve and the individual can be can go about their life and, and never really deal with it again, but many, many people battle with it time and time again. So hopefully these tips will be helpful to you. But understanding the types of things that can kick this off and can trigger this, I think is very helpful. Any type of localized injury to the skin can, for whatever reason, precipitate this. One common scenario is a bug bite might kick this off, like a mosquito bite on the lower leg. Also, any type of infection that you might have, whether it be on the skin or a systemic infection, sometimes just being sick, having the flu or the cold, our immune system gets a little low, and as a result, our skin barrier becomes even more impaired, and this, this can come, come to fruition. Another thing that commonly can trigger this is a allergy to something that you are coming in contact with. This is referred to as a contact dermatitis, something that I caution everyone to be cognizant of in all of my videos, but people with eczema and people with a tendency toward numular eczema, numular dermatitis, have a very high um, risk of developing allergic contact dermatitis as a result of their skin disease, as a result of their inherent impaired skin barrier. They are more likely, their immune system is hanging out in the skin that barrier is impaired, they see, their immune system sees things more readily and as a result is more likely to develop a sensitivity to things that come in contact with the skin. Some of the most common uh, allergens out there are nickel, um, various dyes which may be present in your fabric, 
Personally, I am somebody with a long-standing history of eczema myself, and I have a real sensitivity oftentimes to many blue dyes. This is not uncommon. Uh, so jeans for me can be a no-go. You guys always ask me why I don't wear jeans. Uh, that's why. <laughs> the blue dye can sometimes kick off a flare of, of numular eczema for me and, and really be uncomfortable. Dyes and fabrics and fragrance is a very is a very common one. Not only fragrance in the body washes that you're using, the lotions that you might be using, but also fragrance that is present in your laundry detergents that deposits in your clothing and then you know leaves a residue on the skin. This can also also be a problem. Another another allergen is lanolin. Lanolin is uh, present in a lot of moisturizers. It is derived from sheep's fleece. It's a great moisturizer, but people with eczema end up coming in contact with it so often because they need to use moisturizers on their skin that they can develop an allergy to it. So you have to be very careful of the ingredients in your skincare products. Uh, make sure that it's not the lanolin. Some preservatives are common causes of allergens like methyl isothiazinolone, but it's impossible for me to name every single allergen out there. What's important for you to understand though is that with, with this disease, you can develop an allergy really to anything that comes in contact with the skin and you are at risk for developing that. So at the end of the day, minimizing the number of things that come in contact with the skin, minimizing the number of products, soaps, etc., is a very prudent measure, particularly with this disease. And in young children, it's not uncommon for a flare to be kicked off by a little localized skin infection from uh, bacteria, namely staph bacteria. This is referred to as impetigo. A not uncommon scenario is say your child is, is out playing, they get a bug bite, they scratch the bite because it's itchy, and they, in doing so, they uh, develop a little staph infection on top of the bug bite, and boy, that can really kick off a flare of numular eczema for the child. Then probably the other factor that really plays a major role is the ambient humidity in our environment. When things get dry, when the weather gets dry, uh, this disease can really, really start, start sneaking in. And long, hot showers that dry out the skin can really set the stage for this flaring. Excessively harsh soaps that dry out the skin barrier and lead to more water loss can really kick off a flare of this. So our bathing practices, how dry our environment is, if we're standing close to heaters, these are all things that people with eczema really need to be aware of and know that they have to modify their environment so as to not precipitate a flare of their, their numular eczema. Things that you should be aware of and proactively uh, pursue in order to manage this condition. First of all, it is a skin disease um, and therefore seeing your dermatologist for regular follow-up and check-in is imperative. Uh, first of all, when the disease flares, it may be helpful um, and necessary to obtain a bacterial swab culture from one of the spots to make sure there's not a secondary infection on top of it um, that would need treating. Secondly, um, there, are very, there are a variety of other skin conditions that can look like this that need to, need to be excluded. One common thing is ringworm can sometimes look like this. And so a little, a little scraping of some of the, the scaly stuff may be needed, examined, and fungus ruled out. If fungus is present, then that would need to be treated. And then the other type of evaluation that the dermatologist may need, we may need to do is patch testing. Patch testing is a special type of test in which um, we determine if and what you are allergic to uh, that could be kicking this off. So that, that is something that is very important to pursue as well. Now, as far as skincare, what can you do and what types of things uh, should you be doing? Well, first of all, um, minimizing your bathing is actually really important. Keeping your showers to no more than 10 minutes and not using excessively hot water. The reason being is that very hot water actually dries out the skin further. So limiting the bathing to no more than once a day for no longer than 10 minutes is is almost imperative. Anything more than that is excessive bathing and really just impairing the skin barrier even further and there's there's really no way for this, this skin condition to heal. Then the other thing that you really have to do is 
avoid anything in the skincare sections, any new skincare products, anything jazzy, uh, you know, any scented lotions, body washes. You really want to actually avoid soap during this time, particularly on the lower legs. Soap will further disrupt the skin barrier, or dry out the skin, and lead to persistence of this problem. And then, absolutely, even when the skin is in perfect condition, you have to use a moisturizer to the entire body uh, to prevent this from flaring, to help the skin heal when it's active. My personal favorite, and the one that I strongly recommend to you guys, is Vanny Cream. Vanny Cream is made for people with sensitive eczema prone skin. They don't sponsor me or anything like that. This is genuinely what we recommend, uh, one of the brands that we recommend. I understand this may not be available in your country, but there are some, there are some alternatives which I'll list down below. But this is a nice thick moisturizing cream. It is free of lanolin, it is free of the common uh, preservatives that can be a problem for people with eczema. It is free of dyes, fragrances, masking fragrance. Um, it is really minimal ingredients and it's nice and thick. Here, I'll just squeeze a little out on my hand here. Um, it's a nice thick body cream. Just slathering this to the entire body is, is very important. Okay, now I have to deal with the cream. Um, okay, and then for those patches, however, that are, are really are actively inflamed, either um, red and weepy or dry, they need even an even tighter, tighter moisture seal. And so coming in with something even thicker and greasier is, is important. And so the same company, Vanny Cream, makes this Vanny Ply ointment. It's kind of like the consistency of Vaseline. Come up so you can see. It's the consistency of Vaseline. So if you just put a dot of this onto the numular patch, the coin patch, the, the patch of act actively inflamed skin, and rub it in a circle, that will seal, that will make a seal on top of that, on top of that wounded skin. It will protect it from bacteria and microbes, and it will um, also help to allow the healthy skin cells to come on over that patch of impaired skin and heal, okay? You want to choose something like this Vanny Ply ointment that is free of anything, any really active ingredients whatsoever. Um, unless an antibiotic or um, unless an antibiotic ointment has been prescribed to you by your treating healthcare provider, you actually want to avoid using over-the-counter antibiotic ointments to to apply to the skin in this situation because those are not broad. The, the kind of coverage actually that would even be helpful for the type of staff that you are at risk for. And they actually um, are commonly allergen, they, they actually are common allergens for people with, with eczema. So things like Neosporin, um, you actually want to avoid. Um, so this, this is a great one, particularly when the skin is, is inflamed. It will help whenever you have itch, if you just put a little bit of this on the itchy spot and gently rub it in a circle rather than scratching, that will really help to silence some of that itch and to, to help the skin barrier heal itself. Now, then a third product that I am rather a fan of is actually the Skin Smart Antimicrobial Spray. This is not an antibiotic. It, it's not... It's not an antibiotic or an antifungal or any, any kind of active ingredient. It is nothing more than um, a dilute sterilized solution of water and hypochlorous acids. And this is kind of like, I know it sounds alarming, a very, very, very dilute solution of bleach. Kind of what would be akin to a swimming pool as far as bleach would go. And this actually uh, can help to cut down on bacterial adherence to the, the eczema and help the skin heal without putting you at risk for necessarily contact allergy uh, like you would be, like you, like the kind of risk you would have from using over-the-counter Neosporin. So use, use, using something like this has been shown to be helpful for healing the skin of um, discoid eczema as well as helping with some of that itch. So that would be my other tip as far as skincare products. But again, keeping the bathing to a short duration, uh, removing all fragrance, scented lotions, selecting a fragrance-free um, laundry detergent, 
these are all things that you can do to kind of adjust what you're coming in contact with that could be flaring as well as to help the skin barrier heal. And then the other thing, you know, I mentioned humidity is a key factor in 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 this. So sleeping at night with a cool mist humidifier is also also wonderful. <laughs> Look at all this grease on my hands. Sleeping with a cool mist humidifier in the bedroom at night can also be very, very helpful just to keep the skin from getting too dry at night. So that is another tip. And as I said, your dermatologist, your healthcare provider, they might very well need to take a little skin culture to make sure there's not a um, a, a bacterial infection there. If there is, they may need to give you a prescription antibacterial ointment. So that may be needed, and in which case you would need to use that. People always ask me about antihistamines. Okay, here's the deal with antihistamines. They may be prescribed to you by your healthcare provider for this condition. What you need to wrap yourself, your head around, is that antihistamines do nothing for treating the eczema directly. How they help is actually in helping you get good sleep at night. So um, typically a antihistamine that will make you a little bit sleepy is prescribed and this is very helpful. I know it sounds like why are they trying to drug me? Um, this is very helpful because it allows you to get some sleep to fall asleep. Uh, people with, with numular eczema during a flare in particular, they're very itchy and the itch tends to, tends to accelerate at night and be amped up at night, keeping you from getting good sleep. When your sleep cycle is impaired and you're having poor sleep, the immune system is lowered and the eczema continues to flare and flare even worse as a result of the impaired sleep. Your sleep is poor, it leads to, it makes you very distressed. This exacerbates itch even further, you scratch. I mean, it is a vicious cycle. So the prescription antihistamines at nighttime are often given to kind of help you calm down and sleep a little bit. Um, but they don't necessarily directly treat the eczema. They indirectly treat the eczema by allowing you to kind of sleep, stop scratching through the night, and help the skin heal itself. So that is why they're prescribed. Over-the-counter um, Benadryl is, is, people always say, people always ask about over-the-counter Benadryl, and they say, yeah, I tried Benadryl and it's not working. Yeah, Benadryl won't work for this. Benadryl or diphenhydramine, it is a very short-acting, sedating antihistamine. So you take it, it makes you sleepy, but it doesn't last long enough to, to really help through the night. So a prescription sedating antihistamine is often given for reasons I already mentioned. Um, hydroxazine or Atarax is one such example that is commonly prescribed for this. And that's why it helps you basically sleep at night and keep you from scratching your skin to bits in your sleep, which can really, really be a problem. Don't underestimate the need and the necessity for sleep and healing the skin barrier during this, during this condition and preventing it from flaring. Uh, one of the things that we know about eczema and discoid eczema is that um, as, the, as the itch begins to interfere with sleep and the sleep cycle is disrupted, the impact on quality of life is profound, all right? So it's incredibly distressing in ways that you may not even realize to have impaired sleep from this. You may not even be aware of the fact that your sleep is disturbed as a result of the itching and scratching from this condition. So try and understand that if you're taking care of a child or a loved one who has this, be aware that that may be something that they're going through at night that, that you might not have appreciated before. And don't under, like I said, don't underestimate the impact this can have on their day-to-day -day life. You know, there are many cases of children with eczema out there um, that I have seen and, you know, it's not uncommon for children to have such impaired sleep as a result of the itch of their, of their eczema that they actually develop, they actually have problems focusing in school, um, they become irritable in school, and they get misdiagnosed as having a, either a learning disability or an attention uh, deficit disorder, when in reality, it's that their sleep is, is severely disrupted as a result of their skin disease. And once the skin disease is treated and the child is able to sleep peacefully through the night uh, without scratching, 
their their mood, their irritability, their attention, all of that drastically improves. It's remarkable. I mean, you will take uh, a struggling student and they'll get straight A's. It's I, I've seen it happen time and time again. So if that sounds like your child, you know, realize this could be something that's going on and something to maybe bring up with, with the pediatrician or healthcare provider. But overall, those are my tips for um, numular eczema or numular dermatitis in eczema patients. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys and answering some of the common questions out there with regards to numular eczema. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.